That's a long reading, wasn't it, Charmaine? Because we're in the narrative lectionary, right? And we're working through the Old Testament. If you haven't noticed that, I've actually been preaching on those long Old Testament texts and not really even talking about the gospel lessons, right? Because we're, we're working through the story of, of how Jesus came to get here and then what Jesus did and then what happened beyond Jesus, right? So now we're in this last little bit here um, looking at what's coming and what's coming, or, or should I say who's coming? Jesus is coming, right? So we're working our way up to Jesus and we're now reading through a few stories that are going to be interesting, right? With this, this week we have Daniel in the fiery furnace. How many of you learned about this in Sunday school? Right? Because it's a little kid's story, right? <laughs> right. It's a little kid's story. These, these three guys... And by the way, there's a really good devotion written on this text in the devotional out there. I didn't actually write this one either, so I'm not even plugging myself here. So it was a really good devotion written about these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who actually you find out in the first chapter of Daniel were Jewish men who came here during what? We learned about this last week. Why were they in Babylon? They were exiled. They were taken out of their homeland by the Babylonians because the Babylonians took over their homeland. So they were taken to Babylon. And these Jewish men are here in Babylon and they're actually wealthy men that were appointed by the king of Babylon, by Nebuchadnezzar, to be over the region of Babylon. So they're like, they're not just regular guys, they actually have power in the kingdom. And their names were changed, right? When they got to Babylon, their names were not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they arrived in Babylon, their names was Hananiah, Mishael, and Azur... Azur, Yeah, what that says right there. Azariah. Azariah. And their names were changed. And and that that may not seem like much. But with names comes um, identity and understanding of who we are. Right? Each one of these names, Hananiah actually means God is gracious. And Mishael means who is like God. And Azariah means God keeps him. So when their names were changed, it's more than just about what they're called. It's about a deep identity of who they actually are. Right? And their new names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Abednego is a, is a god that the, the Babylonians, Nego was a god that the Babylonians worshipped. So Abednego is, is bringing praise to that god. Right? So a name change isn't something minuscule. It's something huge. And it's something that we don't talk about. But here's these three guys that are brought before the king because somebody tattled on them, right? And they're brought before the king and the the king says that you're supposed to worship the statue that I made with all, whenever the the musical instruments. Did you get all those nice, that nice long list of musical instruments? Where is it? The sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon. If anybody can tell me what trigon is, I would... would Greatly appreciate that. The harp, the drum, and the entire musical ensemble, you're supposed to fall down and worship this great big golden statue. But they wouldn't do it. And they're brought before the king, and the king says, What do you why won't you guys do this? And what happens? What happens? You guys speak loud, I'm the deaf. They did it. They didn't do what? They didn't pray to the statue. But what did they say to the king before they didn't? It's the most important line in this whole text. And here's the thing that that makes this text important, regardless of the fact of the outcome, right? It's all great and good that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were walking in this fiery furnace that suddenly became an air-conditioned hot spot for a while with this fourth guy who is who? Maybe it might have just been an angel too. We don't. We, we have no. We have no idea. It's a messenger from God, or it's God, or it's the Messiah, or it's. The, it really doesn't matter because it's somebody who walked in the fire with them and, and kept them safe. But they're walking in this fire, and they come out of the fire, and their their hair is not singed, with that, which I was really happy about, and and their clothes don't smell like smoke, and there's nothing going on with them. There's nothing wrong at all, right? They come out of this fire, and they're perfectly fine. And the king 
praises them and says, and now you can't do anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because their God is actually the true God. And you need to worship that God. So don't, don't bring any charges or anything against them if they decide not to worship my statue. And that's all well and good. But this story would have been well and good too is if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had died just as the guards who threw them in had died. Why? The one little line in here. Verses 16 through 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire, and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue. That you have set up. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego at that point in time said, It doesn't matter what happens to us, because anything that happens to us is worse than us turning away and not worshiping our God. If God is able to save us, He will. But if He doesn't, it doesn't matter. Right? How many of us can say that? How many of us would say that? I think of. Times we talked at, my, at the studies that I go to, one of them talked about somebody in a mass shooting someplace recently, and it actually happened in Columbine, so it hasn't been recently, put guns to people's head and asked them if they believed in God, and if they said yes, they shot them. What would you do in that moment? And you could say, well, we never have to worry about that. Oh, no, yes, we do, because there was threats in local schools just here recently. Local schools. Not like Green Bay, which is local for some of you, but I'm talking local to right here. What would you do? There's a great sermon that I'm not going to read to you because I'll show you here. It's like from here over to here. And that's just a snippet of it. I posted it on my Facebook wall today. You can go and listen to it. It's a sermon by Pastor Mark, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on this very text. And some of the things that he talks about is, is it's, a different, it's a difference between an if and a though in a, in a though faith, right? The if faith says, he, and I'm quoting him here, if all goes well, if life is hopeful, prosperous, and happy, if I don't have to go to jail, if I don't have to face the agonies and burdens of life, and if I'm not called bad names because of taking a stand that I feel that I must take, if none of these things happen, then I'll have faith in God and I'll be all right. That's an if faith. If things go my way, then I'll gladly praise God and I'll gladly be here. The though faith, though, says, and I quote him again, though things go wrong, though evil is temporarily triumphant, Though sickness comes and the cross looms, nevertheless, I'm going to believe anyway and I'm going to have faith anyway. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, and though the mountains shake and the swell thereof, the Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Though my life is terrible, I still believe. It's a difference between an if and a though faith. If things go my way, I'll believe. If not, I'll still believe. Can you say, but if not? The most important thing in any one of our lives is to be able to take life as it comes. And it's not always good. I've talked to several people in this room about things that are happening in their lives. Right? Some of them very good things, and some of them very bad things. But we have to stand with God, because God is always going to stand with us. Because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, before Nebuchadnezzar threw them into that furnace, said, whatever happens is going to happen. And when they got thrown into that furnace, what happened? What happened? God was there. And he took care of them. Right? And, and if you ever have, have need to know stories of how this happens in real life, come and ask me because I can tell you personal stories about how God has been there. Through times of trouble, through times of wondering, there's many nights I've spent crying, wondering what in the world I've done to my family. 
but never lost faith in the fact that God was always walking with us. We have to get to the point that we can say, but if not, I will follow God. Because God did everything for us. He gives us hope. He gives us love. He comes to us in our place of hurt and wanting. He comes to us in our time of need. He comes to us as a baby born in a manger so that he can understand exactly what it is that we're going through. And walks with us every day of our life. So if nothing else this Advent, get to the point that you can say. If everything doesn't go right, I'll still worship God. Because of everything that he's already done for me. Stand with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And say. I will not worship other gods. Because my God. If he is able will deliver, deliver me. But if not. I still know that he loves me. And walks with me everywhere I go. So stand and say. But if not.